Um, um, I know my class was coming tonight. I appreciate Dr. Brown bringing his class. Thank you. And um, also spread the word to your peers and your colleagues that um, we are taping this um, training and we'll make it available to students as well. Okay. Um, I think we have some students here tonight from the online program. If you do, can you raise your hand? Yeah. Welcome. Nice. I wanted to um, extend a special welcome to you um, for an event that we're having on campus. Um, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to our guest speaker, uh, who is Denise Myers. She is a licensed clinical social worker. We have worked closely together for almost 11 years now. Yes. Um, she um, is a very seasoned social worker and an expert in this area, so I think this is the third or fourth year you've mm -hmm. come to speak to our students. So, thank you. Glad to have you here. Hi, guys. Um, Jackie, before you leave, can you put this up on here? Can I get online? Just I don't know if I need your like, credentials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Heather? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I just wanted to get onto the DOH website. Just to the yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pull up the DOH website um, so you guys can see a little bit when I'm chatting about. things up for you so just give me a minute. have in here just shout it out to me so I know everybody's advanced standing we have generalists yes okay um, generalists and so you guys are going to launch your master's program I'm sure of it we're already in master's okay so we graduate May of 2020 okay so then the following year okay Welcome. this is so exciting I'm so excited to meet you guys um, I'm going to tell you right now I do get very passionate about this so if you see me going a little bit um, very energetic. It's just because I love my profession. I love our profession. Um, I holistically believe that everybody must, must, must get licensed. Um, you should get licensed right out of the gate before life starts. I brought two interns with me. They're going to talk about getting licensed after life starts. So it's going to. Um, they're going to tell you a little bit about um, some of the obstacles or um, some of the fun adventures that they've come across um, with taking their exam and stuff. So I just wanted to kind of um, walk you through a little bit about licensure, why it's so important, why it's so valuable, um, why as a profession to be a, an LCSW, a licensed clinical social worker, is very valuable and meaningful um, to, to not only your profession, but your career as you go on, okay? Um, this is the DOH website. Um, right up here is where we have clinical social work. So your, uh, I sent out some handouts too. Um, I'm just going to share with you how to navigate this. When you do graduate, as you come up on the website, um, this is what it's going to look like for you. You're going to want to become really, really familiar with constantly learning the DOH website. Okay? Um, yes, ma'am. You may not know what DOH is. Oh, I apologize. Department of Health. Okay? Um, I'm sorry. Let me back up just a little bit. Um, Department of Health. This is who our regulating government, uh, governing body is going to be, okay? They're up in Tallahassee, DOH. Um, just like we have in education, we have the DOE, Department of Education. We have the DOH. Um, 
So the DOH is who actually, once you become um, graduates and you say, I now want to become a registered clinical intern, you're going to apply to the DOH. You're going to send them um, all your information, and then they're going to give you a registered intern number. Okay? So I'm going to walk you through a little bit of that process on how that actually takes place. Um, and I'm going to also share with you the amount of fees that go into that. So save up now. Um, because it's going to be a little bit costly. Um, this is going to be, if you can see up here, it's just uh, floridamentalhealthprofessions.gov. If you just type in, do a Google search, Department of Health Florida, this is how you're going to get to this page. Okay? Um, coming back over here, um, this page is going to be very helpful. Let me um, just go back one more time. Again, we're going to come under license and regulation, and then we're going to go to clinical search work. You can see the DOH um, uh, regulates all of these different professions. So there's massage therapist, um, medical psychiatrist, medical doctor, um, dental hygienist. We fall under the Department of Health, and they are the ones who give all the professions licensure. They're the ones who will make sure that your credentials are in check. If in the in future, if you ever have a problem um, with ethics or regulations, um, and there's a, a issue that's filed against your license as a clinician, um, the, this is the governing board that will handle it, okay? So you want to familiarize yourself with DOH. Um, I, I hand it out to you guys. Everybody should have gotten one of these. And again, we'll just walk through it. This is an email that I received um, that I wanted to share with all of you. This is... Um, it's very small print, first of all, let me just say. But down here in the bottom, um, these are the regulatory professionals for our discipline. Okay, so under clinical social work, we have two. One is Ms. Mitchell and one is Ms. Wilson. You can see the alphas that they, um, they take care of uh, for your, your licensure, your packet when you send it in, and there's their emails. Uh, we no longer have the third person there. Right, someone just chimed in right now. Um, so moving on, um, again, just picking the um, clinical social work. This is where um, both interns and licensed professionals will go to, okay? So if you're looking to apply, this is the first tab that I have highlighted that I'm hovering over. If you want to renew your license, if you want to check the status of your license, if you want to look up a license, and then if you want to look up complaints on a license. So just to give you an idea, I'm going to look myself up here, um, license verification, and we're going to select, um, let's see, I have to see this clearly. These are all the different boards. Um, I'm sorry. This is going to be the profession is going to be clinical social work. Sometimes it will list it as clinical social work or it will just say social work. So just again, navigating, just to share with you. Okay, there's school psychologist. Uh, let's go with who registered <laughs> me to. I'm gonna put one of my interns on the spot right now. <laughs> who knows their internship number over there? I think mine is 11625. 11, one, oh, I need number off, 11625. I think. <laughs> okay, if not, we're gonna be looking up somebody else. Yep. So here is um, Jessica. Jessica will be introduced in just a little mm -hmm. bit. She's a registered clinical intern. That's her license number. She's clear and active. This is when her license will expire. Her original date of issue, this is where she's attached to address-wise. If anybody wants to look you up, this address, you always want to perhaps attach to your place of business because any layperson can just look you up and discover where you live. Not that you probably can't do that with a little bit of effort on Google anyway, um, but you don't want to be out there for, to be out there. So this is how you can also look up. Um, you can also see, um, and I know she has no disciplinary actions or anything <laughs> of that nature, so we can look her up. There's nothing here. So this is how um, the DOH uh, website will work. Coming back again, um, if you want to look up somebody, um, I'm going to try and see if I could do, let's do this by myself, um, Myers, Denise, and I know my license number. 
So here's my license number. You can see under my license, I have qualifications of being a qualified supervisor for an MHC, which is a mental health counselor. Um, and I'm also a, or a qualified supervisor for CSW, which is clinical social work, okay? So this is a little extra something that um, Jessica won't have on hers right now. This is my um, office address where I practice, um, and I've been licensed since 2002. Yes, I'm that <laughs> So um, if you're looking for a qualified supervisor moving forward, you just want to look up their license and make sure that they're qualified, okay? Um, because somebody might say, sure, I can supervise you, no problem. And if they are not um, qualified by DOH, um, then they're not going to be able to be eligible to sign your form at the end, okay? You've got to make sure because you don't want to get on the news chase and say, oh, I've spent, you know, so many years with a qualified supervisor and you were never, they were never qualified from the beginning. So coming back to application, um, this is where it gets super fun. Um, when you are applying to become a registered intern, and everybody must do this. You graduate, you get your letter that um, she was talking about, and you must, must, must register. Um, and, and my interns are gonna share with you guys a little bit about the timelines, because they're the experts on that. Because um, I've already been licensed, so I don't remember the timelines, yeah. because the law is constantly changing. But we're gonna come here, you can see all of these different um, Obviously, you're not for mental health counselors, um, but if you were, there's just different licensures. They have a different packet, so every diff uh, discipline is different. So you're going to come up to a registered clinical social work intern. You're going to click on this, and you are going to look for the requirements. This is all the fun stuff that you need. It's all right here. Um, I'm going to call your attention to number four, so this qualified supervisor part right here. Um, you're going to need an official transcript, your coursework. Um, this is your practicum. This is that you did clinical supervision or um, clinical internships with what you're doing now with your agencies. And your qualified supervisor. In order to, um, it says to submit an electronic um, mail, click here. You can find a clinical supervisor, an LCSW, who is a qualified supervisor and say, um, just as my N2 interns, Hey, I want, I want to attach to you. I want to do supervision with you. No problem. Um, I'm going to submit an email to the DOH under who the people are that supervise your last name on that little grid sheet that I just gave you. Um, and I'm going to say, I would like to attach to Jessica. She sent in her packet. Um, please accept this email as confirmation that I want to uh, supervise her. Um, in the packet, when you go under um, the process and you actually do, it says send a letter from your supervisor, but an email will suffice. Your supervision can't start until after we become attached according to the DOH. So if it takes the DOH three months to get this process done, anything we do prior to, super, or prior to the DOH saying we are officially attached does not count, okay? So don't pay for supervision if it's not really counting. Make sense? Okay. So does anyone have any questions so far about this process? I'm pretty open, so if anybody, you can just like stop me at any given time, okay? I'm just gonna keep talking. So here are some helpful hints about um, supervision. Um, there is, uh, we used to at UCF have a, um, a place on the UCF page for qualified supervisors. We don't have that anymore, but what we do have um, is Facebook. Love Facebook. Um, there is, I just sent this picture out, actually, give me just one moment here, on some groups. There is a web page called Qualified Supervisor Connection. Um, you probably want to write that down if you're a Facebooker. Don't ask me about Instagram tweeting and all that other jazz. I can only do one thing, uh -huh, which is Facebook. On here, um, Crystal Weiss. She teaches at UCF? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Crystal Weiss. Um, she has been gracious enough to put this together for us. And on here, she's created a uh, spreadsheet for a lot of us um, LCSWs. Um, and, well, I think it's just LCSWs, honestly. Um, for us to put on a spreadsheet of where we live, um, where we do supervision, and what we charge for supervision. 
Um, so if you can get on this page, uh, you can poke around here and start just reading a lot of information. It's really, really great stuff. Um, a lot of LCSWs on here that are posting all throughout the state of Florida. So this is a very helpful link. Okay. What was the page called again? Um, qualified Supervisor Connection. I love this thing. Um, and there's a lot of, like, anybody who has a question, hey, I'm an intern, I'm trying to figure out, you can post it on here, and you'll get 50 responses. There's, there's always dialogue going on here. This is how I kind of keep up with the latest trends of, um, of what the law is doing. Uh, because, for example, there was something that recently changed. Um, I guess I could. Here's the, here's the spreadsheet. Not that you guys can see this, um, but there's a spreadsheet. She just updated it, February 11, 2019, um, and I think there's 50 supervisors on it so far, um, or even more. It says license type, geographic area, pricing, area of focus. So if you want to specialize with children, um, and all of those details are captured on her spreadsheet. It's really amazing. Um, one of the things that um, is constantly seeming to evolve and is on this uh, web page or on this Facebook page is um, when you can get licensed. So you graduate school, you go here, you click on apply, you go through the process, you send them your $150, that's the first go around, um, to take your exam is $260 start crying now because then you have to pay $180 to get your license when you're done but just know when you're licensed and you're an LCSW you can turn around and go make money not that we're in it for the money right guys <laughs> yeah. yeah it's $150 to do this application process um, so as soon as you get out of school um, you're gonna want 150 bucks accessible to you because you're gonna do this process and it's gonna say you're gonna to have to pay us 150 bucks before we even process your application. Then within two years, you have to do supervision for two years. How many years do we have to do supervision for? Two, two years. It's a minimum of two years or until you get licensed, okay? If it takes you, and they're gonna come up here and talk about this, if it takes you five years to get licensed, you have to be in supervision that entire five years. But the base minimum is two years. You cannot rush it, you cannot complete all of your hours in like six months and say I'm done, I'm good. It's two years, okay? So within that two year time period, um, you have to, as it stands right now, it's February what day? 19, as it stands right now, you have to wait to take your exam till after that two years is over. Okay, they are lucky enough to be able to take their exam within the two year time period. Um, the DOH, um, our licensing board, has um, had conversations with, write this one down, it's called the ASWB, which is not Warner Brothers, I know that sounds, it's ASWB, right? Am I saying, oh yeah. I always think Warner Brothers and Looney Tunes when I say ASWB. Um, for all you old schoolers out there. Um, the ASWB is the um, company uh, that provides the test. I'm not sure, what does ASWB stand for? Do we social know? Work panel. Something social work. <laughs> okay. Oh, if any, there's candy up here. I will throw out candy if you get that right. Just so you know, look it up on your phone real fast. Um, ASWB, um, they're the regulatory um, testing board, okay? The testing board, um, chatted in some capacity with the DOH um, and now there's there's conversation that no longer can just clinical social work interns take the exam within the two years they have to wait till after the two years I'm not sure what the whole history is behind that and how that came to be but it's posted on the Facebook um, web page you can read about it how they're going back and forth that is not true for mental health interns and marriage and family interns. That's just true for us, we're special that way. So they're trying to figure that out to see if we can get it back to how it was before, okay? Do we have any questions on that? Because I don't want to confuse anybody. Yeah? So if you're not registered as of now, then you have to wait the end of the two years. Two years, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm gonna, if I can just read to you, um, this, just so we're all on the same 
uh, dialogue here. Because this is something new. Um, and when I say new, it's just posted um, November of 2018. Um, so you'll have to constantly be um, on top of it. Uh, our board received a letter from the ASWB saying that the state of Florida was in violation of the fair use agreement associated with the exam for social workers, which requires two years of clinical experience before taking the exam. Two years before taking the exam. As of November 1st, 2018, registered clinical social work interns have to complete all supervision before taking the exam. Our board was to write to the ASWB, which is the testing group, to request a variance or waiver of the requirement. If the ASWB refuses, then we go back to everyone having to complete supervision before taking the exam, okay? So that's where we are right now. When I graduated, um, I had to wait two years. I took the exam. Um, I will be, I'll be very honest with you, I did not pass the exam the first go around. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very intense exam. Um, they'll speak to how they're studying for it. I, um, did, I felt as though I did not study correctly for it when I, I studied, but when I went and took the exam, I learned how to study after seeing the exam. Nowadays, um, the ASWB, when you pay your $260 to them, they offer you an $80 um, opportunity to look at the exam um, and take a practice exam just as if you would going to sit for the exam. I didn't have that opportunity. I'm gonna tell you, it is a must. You must, 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 must take that practice exam. You will not be sorry that you saw the exam as it's going to be when you really go take the exam. It is legitimately the same thing. Okay. Um, I'm also going to say one other thing about the exam. When you take that practice exam, you want to sit with that exam. You don't want to do it for 20 minutes, then go do some laundry, or go see, like, take, you know, I'm going to click on it for about 15 minutes and stay with it. And then you want to sit down for four hours um, and, and train the body and the brain to be able to sit, because you get four hours to take this exam. Um, you want to be able to block out a or four hours window of time to be able to take this practice exam that you pay $80 for. So when you go sit and do the real one for $260, you know what you're up against and, and you know what it looks like already. Make sense? But you don't want to do it in snippets because then when you come down to test day, you're, it's not snippet format. You have to stay the whole time. Okay. So when I first took my exam, I failed it by um, two points. And then um, I waited 10 months, because I got that test thing going on, you know? Um, so don't do that either. Um, you have how many days after you, if you don't pass it the first time, you have 90 days? Or mm -hmm. you have to nine, 90 days. 90 days, you have to wait. I waited 10 months. Me how Not, I know. <laughs> what's that? I said, ask me how I know. Uh, mm -hmm. Rico took it once, but we're not gonna talk about that. Um, <laughs> Um, you, I waited 10 months and then I took it again and then I passed it. Um, but in that 10 months I studied um, properly for the exam after having seen it, obviously because I didn't pass it the first time. Okay? So this is just a little <coughs> bit about um, the exam. Um, let me see here. So when you are in supervision, um, I also handed you out, this is my little, yes ma'am? I was going to ask, you take the so yes, when okay, that's a great question. Um, there is no reciprocity. Well, maybe there is, but let me just say I'm not leaving Florida, so I'm good. But um, to my knowledge, there's no reciprocity. Generally speaking, the Florida exam is the Florida exam. California is California, and I understand California is the hardest exam yet. Um, Georgia is different. Um, uh, Alabama State, all the states. We have a lot of, I've had a lot of interns from New York. They come, they're licensed in New York. They come to Florida. They submit all of their wonderful um, stuff to, uh, to Florida. And the Florida licensing board says, oh, wait a second. I know you were licensed in New York, but we're going to pick apart your, your degree and your license. And you didn't take a um, psychotropic medications class. You need to go back to UCF and take that class doesn't matter you were licensed in the state of Florida. You have another class to take. Oh, and wait, you had supervision with um, 
a psychiatrist up in New York. No, no, the only approved supervisors that can do supervision for clinical social workers are ones that are, are clinical social workers or ones that have taken clinical social work classes to be able to be um, supervisors. So those hours you took in New York that were approved for New York don't count for Florida. So in different states, there's different requirements. If you think you're gonna be moving or something, check into that state to find out what exactly that they're gonna be requiring of you. Um, I know I have an intern here. She moved to North Carolina. Um, the, the requirements are, are different there, but she, uh, I have been in contact with the licensing board in North Carolina, as she has as well, and everything has uh, flowed properly that she can take her test for Florida and North Carolina, okay? So you just have to know what state you're looking at. Yes, sir? Uh, just, just to add that if you're going to another state, some states have an L and an L right after graduation, and then they have the advanced clinical Correct. There's like a stair step in between MSW, another layer, and then LCSW. We, we just have the, the one. Um, so the one like license besides registered intern. So you can also check into what they have um, there as well. So um, in, this is my supervision book. This is how I keep track of all my interns. Um, in here, I've also handed you out this um, piece of paper. And I've also handed you this piece of paper. Um, when you are doing your supervision hours, you need at least 100 hours of contact time. I was just gonna say face to face, but that changed as well. It does not have to be face to face. Um, you need 100 hours. There's 52 weeks in a year. Isn't it nice that the DOH gives you off two weeks a year for vacation, so you only need 100 hours instead of 102? Um, so, I think that's super nice of them. Um, so you need 100 hours um, in, in which, uh, of supervision time, which is 15, and it's because it's 1,500 hours of client contact time. So it is assumed that as interns, you are at least sitting face-to-face -face with clients for at least 15 hours a week, and every time you do 15 hours with clients, you now need to go sit with a supervisor and discuss for one hour your 15 hours of, of completion time. That's the minimum. Okay, does everybody follow that? If you do 30, must you sit with a supervisor for now two hours? Not necessarily, no. It would be a smart, wise idea. Um, but it's not necessarily something that's required by the DOH. Okay? Um, this is the form that you will get once you are completed with your, I call it the power of the pen. It's so nice. Um, once this form gets signed by your supervisor and they stroke this form here and say you've completed your two years of supervision, um, you are now eligible to take the exam. Does that mean you stop supervision? No. You are always to be supervised until you get your what? license always okay so um, this other form that I handed you is something that I just made up Give me just one second um, I just made this up because um, in the event that I what die, mm. die. <laughs> my words do not have power I must say um, I'm a good Christian person like that in the event that I die you want to have record that you saw me for this many hours because the DOH does not log anything on a regular basis. Um, if my words were that powerful, I would say, if in the event I won the lottery, <laughs> it didn't happen. Okay. It's worth a try, though, just in case my words have power. If in the event that I um, die, I, my interns all have a signed sheet, okay? So I keep one. Um, this one's not filled out. So I keep one for myself. I'm going to come out of the screen. I keep one for myself and I sign theirs. So if, if in the event that they lose theirs, I have one. So we, I, we both have a duplicate, okay, of the same thing. Now, for your supervision, um, it also goes on to, to state the reason why I have a G and an I in one column on that form is because you can do group supervision and you can do individual supervision. They have to alternate. You cannot do consecutively group, 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 group. 
a group is consistent, uh, or considered rather, three to six interns. Three to six. No more than six. You can have individual supervision with one or two. So two people can show up and we consider that individual supervision. So you can have individual, group, individual, group. You can have all individual if you so choose. You cannot have all group, okay? Um, you can, because it's, it's the way of the world now, um, do supervision um, telephonically. I said it right. <laughs> That's a trick word for me. Um, or Skyping, um, like communication through or FaceTime, video chat. Um, but you, the majority of your sessions um, should be face to face. I'm an animated person. We've tried this before, doing it over the phone. People walk on each other. It's so not helpful. Um, I don't care for it. So I require all of my interns to be face to face, um, except for the one who's in uh, North Carolina. I've let her go, um, so she's good. So, and you had a question, I'm sorry, I kept talking. Um, what happens if you change supervisor? Like say you move to another city mm -hmm. within those two years. So you can have as many supervisors, well, okay, wait a second, I'm being recorded, so I should probably not make <laughs> such a blanket statement. I know you can have more than one supervisor, to how many I don't know, um, but some of my interns can have me as a supervisor, um, another supervisor, not somebody that they work with or something that offers free supervision, can also become a supervisor for them as long as the DOH approves them. Um, if the DOH approves another supervisor, you can have two supervisors um, or, or more than. Um, so then that way, you can have variety of different um, styles of doing uh, clinical work. So I think that would be great. Um, some people get supervision from free or for free from work. If you find a, a place of employment that will offer that for you, that has a um, willing clinician to be able to do that. Um, and then sometimes people still want to pay for a different um, outlook of how they would handle cases or how would you do this or that, um, just based on personality. So you can have more than one supervisor. Um, if in the event that you do not complete with a supervisor, um, I, I have interns that have this, you want to have this form, this is the most current one, if you look at it, I think it says 2016, 11, 2016. It's on this website. Um, you can um, have your supervisor, when you know you're gonna depart from one of them, you want to have them fill out this. Don't go back two years later and say, oh, I needed you to fill out that form because they'll say, where's your hours, who are you, I don't remember, all that. You want to be, a, a, you know, this is just like being in school. You want to be on top of your own stuff, okay? So you get them to fill out this form um, if you think you're going to gravitate away from them. If you, if you don't like your supervisor, that's okay too. You can say, oh, you know, I'm going to start trying with a different supervisor. Um, and you just want to make sure you fill out this form. And then you send it to Tallahassee, at the DOH, so they can scan it and keep it in your file. Okay, yes? Where did you get this form? Is this like on that website? That one is on, on the DOH website. Okay. The, the other one that has the G and the I where it just says, so I just created that. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, ma'am? I was going to ask, um, can you use time to track or any electronic logging? However you want to. Um, I am old school. I am just not old, for the record. Um, I like paper and pen, so when they come, I just, I don't log in a computer or blah, blah, blah. I also have a paper calendar if anybody thinks that's funny. I don't use my electronic device for anything um, other than phone calls. So I have all of my interns, they, they're required to bring their form to me, um, and I sign in their book. So this is how I do it. Okay, any other questions? Okay, let me keep um, coming back over here for just a second. Um, it's kind of warm in here, but maybe I'm just like yeah. working too hard. Is, uh, is it? Okay, I thought it was my brain cell. So, um, we can't adjust it. <laughs> it says here, how, how do I remove a clinical um, uh, supervisor? So you can see here, verification of clinical experience form. This is the form I just handed out to you. They would have to fill this out and um, give you back a copy, and then submit it. And I suggest that everybody scan everything and email it to yourself.
So for whatever reason, you always have an electronic file for yourself and it's just an email. So if your computer crashes or whatever, you can find it on your Gmail, Yahoo, Knights Mail, you'll have that available to you. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring another reference up. Um, Socialworkguide.org has the qualification and requirements for each state. So if you are looking oh, okay. for um, there's tons of information. Um, can you say that again one more time? Yes. So Socialworkguide.org. Socialworkguide.org. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Always the safest bet, of course, is to go to the own state. Like you can fish around on that. That'd be great. It's, um, but it, then you can always come back to the actual state itself. Yes. Um, I will share with you. Um, I I had a uh, back surgery when I went to go take my exam. Um, they. I don't know if you guys have it here or not. This was back in the day, I know. But anyway, um, I went to a little, um, you, you go to a testing center site. People were in this testing center site in cubicles. Um, they give you little um, earplugs. Uh, and people were taking typing tests and things. Um, that did not well work well for my brain. I was not prepared for that at all. Um, so I had had a back surgery. Uh, I went to my doctor, asked for a letter of accommodation. Uh, so they put me in a little testing room all by myself. So I could read the questions through, talk to myself, walk around the room. It was wonderful. I think that's really what um, worked well for my brain personally, just because that's how I take tests and big exams. Um, so there is um, some, some things down here, applicants with a health history or um, if there's things that you need to inform the board of when you go to take um, your exam, this is something that you should know, okay? That it's available to you. But that's a good piece to know. Okay, so let me come back over here. Does anyone have um, any questions about just the licensure? Here's the fees. Um, it's $150 non-refundable um, to the Department of Health. This will tell you um, the process. I think we kind of flipped on that. You just need your letter, a letter from a qualified supervisor, which is also an email available to you. Um, this, this page, you really, really just want to become familiar with this website. Um, I'm going to, this has nothing to do with supervision or anything like this, but I'm going to share with you. Um, you got to love this probable cause. <laughs> As an MSW, um, and don't quote me on this because I am not an attorney and I am not um, offering you legal advice, but as an MSW, um, right now, other than like um, me suing you because you didn't provide me with um, competent clinical sound whatever, there's, there's no leverage against you. When you become a registered clinical intern, you are now owned by the DOH and you are, account, uh, you are uh, responsible for chapter 491 and all of its contents, okay? So now sanctions can be brought against you. Um, that's why having a qualified supervisor and someone who's competent that knows what they're doing is a, is a must for you because you wanna be directed correctly. One of the things that I have all of my interns do is they have to carry malpractice insurance. Because if a client wants to sue somebody, I want them to go through them first and then come to me. Um, however, as a qualified supervisor, as long as I'm giving them sound advice in their practice um, and they're following it, um, that shouldn't be an issue, of course. But if, if I say to one of my interns, hey, tell your client to jump off a bridge and they tell the client and something happens, then I'm liable for that. But if I say, don't tell your client any harm to themselves, this is what Social Work 101 is, we do no harm to our clients, and they go tell their client, well, what's the big deal, or some, then they're gonna be liable for that, that instruction, that client contact, okay? So I require everybody to have malpractice insurance. It is not a requirement of the DOH at all. Um, I also require all of my interns to go to um, the, uh, the board meetings, for the Department of Health. There is a board um, that meets, uh, I'm gonna show you, they meet like four times, six times a month, or, I'm sorry, or a year rather. Um, you can see here May, August, and November um, where they're gonna be. This is all public record. Um, sometimes they do come here to Orlando. 
I require all of my interns um, to go, here's some upcoming meetings, to go to these meetings. Okay, here's Orlando, then they go Orlando, they go to Howie in the Hills. Um, it is a, if you, if your intern or if your supervisor does not recommend this to you, um, I would encourage you regardless to go because you want to understand how the board actually operates, not only making decisions with law, um, they usually meet for two days. The first day is all business. Um, second day is all hearings um, with issues being ethical charges being brought up against clinicians for various reasons. Who thinks they know the number one charge that um, is usually brought up against clinicians? Tell me. Is it relationship with clients? Yes. It's, it's um, inappropriate um, love triangle drama relationships with clients. Number one charge. And if you think as an intern, you would, I've been at this since 2002, um, you'd be surprised. Um, all of my interns have had to go to the, the probable board. People rent houses to people. Um, therapists will rent a house. Um, they go on cruises together. Um, because we're, we're a, a, a compassionate group of people, and sometimes we blur lines. Um, so that's why you have a qualified supervisor who says, uh-uh, that's not what we're doing. You're always looking for a consultation with your qualified supervisor, okay? I like the smiles in the audience because like, you're like, no way, and yes way. You need to go hear some of these, um, these meetings. Because if you think it can't happen, one day, 20 years in practice, there was a woman who's been practicing 30 years, private practice. Um, she was actually a heterosexual clinician, um, fell in love with her female client who was going through a divorce. Um, and then that female client brought her up on charges because she kept making advances inappropriately towards her. It happens. You would think it doesn't happen, but it can happen. So you've got to hear, there's a lot of cases where interns will run around and call themselves psychotherapists. You can't call yourself a psychotherapist because you are not licensed yet. Um, you, you call yourself a registered clinical intern, social work intern. The whole thing, like all, you write it all the way down, okay? So there's, there's little, um, there was an intern who on a business card um, just wrote um, LCSW and they were a registered intern. You can't do that. They got sanctions. Um, they had to go back and, and take an ethics class. So wh whatever you think you won't do, just go and listen to what's been done um, because it's, it's just interesting. I think you guys probably found it interesting, I know. Um, so this is where the board meetings happen. If in the event you can't go, um, this, is pre this is coming meetings. If you go back to the previous meetings, you can even just listen. They have the audio recordings of all the meetings on here. Um, but it's just, I'm a people person, so I like to go to them and, and feel them. Yes? Do we need to sign up to go to those meetings? Or can we you up? do not. You just, you just show up. If you're an LCSW, eventually down the road, you're going to need what's called CEUs, which is um, Continuing Education Units. Um, and you can actually go to the meetings and get CEUs for the meetings, um, for attending the meetings. Yeah, there, it's, it's fascinating to just hear. Okay? Um, what's my time? So, um, this is what's on here, but you can look at past meetings, um, full board meetings, let's see. So here's all the information, you can scroll through this, blah, 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 blah. let's get to, um, oh, and I will tell you, um, health history submitted, you, you can just read these things, I'm trying to see if there's an intern one. It is, it is a legal hearing, by the way. You will have the opportunity to be represented by counsel if someone has brought a charge against you. Um, there, is a, um, there is an attorney for the state, and there is an attorney for the board. Because the board, as they divvy sanctions, the attorney has to know what the board can and cannot sanction. There's, so there's a prosecuting attorney, and you're entitled to have a defense attorney. But you can kind of read what's gone on. Okay. Um, all of these things are on here. Okay. You can grab a bowl of or something. Um, okay. So that's kind of 
Now, I just wanted to share with you guys, um, does anybody have any uh, questions about the process itself? Yes, ma'am. Um, CEUs will come after your license, so when you achieve two years, pass the exam, then you're going to be interested in knowing about CEUs. So we'll just place that on hold for right now. So I'm going to introduce my two interns. Round of applause. We have um, Rico and Jessica. Come on up here. Um, should I make them tell you how old they are? Like, <laughs> So, come over here. Don't be bashful. Ladies first. Oh, He's yeah. so sweet. Um, so, and I'm going to turn this off. Yeah. Um, so, Jessica, Rico, they're both interns. They'll tell you a little bit about um, how they came to me and then how we've all kind of connected together. So, I, I think you guys don't need anything on here, so I'm just going to shut this down so that it's not maybe a hot. <coughs> Want me to go first? Okay. Uh, my name is Jessica Wiles, and um, I am also a little bit older going for my um, LCSW. I graduated um, from University of Kentucky in 2006. Um, it wasn't really pushed in Kentucky to for us to go ahead and get our license, or maybe I was asleep during that time because I was a <laughs> young yeah, college student. I'm not really you sure must get your license. I'm pushing it. Yes. Okay. Yes, and I will tell you why because <laughs> don't be sleeping. Because when you wait until later, I think since I've been with um, with Denise, since I've, I think I just got married, I've moved twice, we just bought a house, I had a baby six months ago, trying to take the test. So life does get a little insane. Um, and it's not that it's not doable, but had I done it 10 years ago, and you know, um, that it would have been just a little bit easier. But um, I think one thing that stood out to me during the process of becoming a registered intern especially because i was from out of state um, so if i think that if you're looking to get your license in another state uh, make sure that you have a catalog um, of all the courses and things like that um, from ucf because um, i had to go back and it was you know 12 years later and try to find description of all the courses that i took and you know all of those things to send into the state and it was, you know, doable again, but just a little more difficult. So, um, just can you speak on that? The course catalog, um, because I do everything in paper, um, <laughs> again, is is actually like a book that um, UCF will put out. I know everything is electronic, it's online, but yeah. I want a book, like print it all out, because SW, SOW, 2015. Um, does not correlate to Kentucky SOW, what is that? Um, so they want to read actually what that class consists of to see if it will match up with whatever they have. Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, so just like she said, like saving that digitally so that you have it when you need it, you know, um, I think it would be important. Um, what else? I did take um, Dr. D's course um, here, the preparatory course for the exam. I think that it's been um, useful. I've, read it all the time. I'm planning on taking the test um, here in the next couple of months. So, um, you know, just preparing the best we can. There's also a pocket prep um, app that we use to, to you know, kind of go over some of those questions and everything. It's a little bit more difficult, too, when you've been out of, you know, the master's program for so long because, you know, um, you're doing your, your, your job, but there are so many things that maybe aren't job related that, you know, you don't think you'll forget, but you forget. So, um, so that's helpful too, but anything else? What it's else? neat to see everybody grow over two years. <laughs> Rico's been with me a little bit longer, I must say, because she did get married, buy a house, have a baby, so like that's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, you will like, you need to like your supervisor. Um, we all get along. Um, I do supervision at my house, um, so I have to like them um, just as much because um, if I don't, then I will kind of um, push you alone. Um, we do breakfast, we chat. Supervision is not to be specifically, let's talk about the test, let's talk about the test. That's kind of on your own time, they get together. Supervision is really about let's talk about your clients and make sure that you're doing good, um, that you feel confident because when you're interfacing, it's not like um, we're med students and you're doing a residency and I'm operating and you're operating and the patient's out and we can talk about what you're doing or not doing right or wrong, okay? Um, it's you're seeing a client and then you're reporting back to me 
how that's gone and I'm going to give you some suggestions on on what you know we can role play that and um, I will also share with you this as well um, <coughs> I'm not going out of camera being here. Um, I didn't pass this around, but your supervisor um, should have for you a contract to sign, okay? This is a contract that I have um, for my interns. It's a couple of pages, it's three pages. Um, it talks about what they should be expecting from me as their qualified supervisor and what I expect from them. So sometimes we'll revisit this. It also says our fee agreement. Sometimes we'll revisit this um, because I'm not your therapist. Though you guys don't need therapists, I'm just saying. Um, what, I'm a qualified supervisor. We're here to talk about cases. But when you spend two years, three years, four years with people, you start to have a tendency to um, hold the baby, learn about family life and all that. So your qualified supervisor, as you need to be, make sure that there's always boundaries and ethics in place okay there's always a contract same goes for your clients you'll see your clients maybe four or five years this is not a friendship i had a client call me the other day i'd like to schedule an appointment i haven't heard from this person for so long how are you so on and so forth okay and then i said um okay so are you hire or what are you calling for like what do you want to schedule for do you want to schedule for um a therapy session or and, he, and the client says, and it's a male, and I'm a female, obviously. So he says, well, I was calling to um, talk to a friend. And I said, oh, no, so sorry. Um, you called the wrong line then. Let me get you over to the friend line, because that's not me. <laughs> so, and when I say, what did you, that's my, my color commentator here coming up. Um, what did you call for, a therapist or a coach? Because I do a little bit of coaching and consulting, not physically, um, but I, I do that as well. But, um, what I mean by that is sometimes people need to just be heard and listened to and you need to be a therapist um, Sometimes they need a little bit more consultation and direction So when I asked what is he calling for what would he like to schedule our hour to be? And he said well, I would like to talk to a friend Line in the sand right there. Okay, so there's a contract for interns too because we spend a lot of time together They are coming into my home. Um, they do get to meet my daughter who's back there daughter yeah um, so they get to meet her um, you're when you, when we intermix in personal space it can become very friendly but it's always business first it's always business first okay so that's why I, I always want to sign off that everything is is done on the on the right okay so and Rico I think brought you some handouts I did yes. um, we love handouts because we love paper <laughs> so one of the handouts I brought you was uh, 10 steps to licensure. You probably have already received something like this, but it's always cool to come to these and take something home. So I only made 25 if you guys, you know, will make You can snap it or do whatever you do with your electronic devices. Um, it's 10 steps. It'll tell you everything from 1 to 10 that you'll need to do to get your license. Does it talk about the ethics course and the... It does. Say, okay, good, because that was one thing that wasn't... <coughs> He's on web courses. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm sure you'll see this um, Rico, several can times you, again. Can you talk about that? The um, With licensure, you have to pass the exam, and then there's three things you have to also mm -hmm. take. Yeah, so um, you got the test, and then you're going to have to take... Um, uh, three other courses is HIV, domestic violence, and what's the third? Ethics. Ethics. Mm -hmm. um, so. And laws and rules. <coughs> yeah, I think like that's, 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 with, that's in the ethics one. Rules. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, on the um, Department of Health, when it had the process up here, there's a link for CE Broker, and I just went there. It was like $94 for all three of them. And Can you back up and explain CE Broker? I don't, I don't really even know okay. what that is. So it literally is just a link on the thing. It says you have to take the ethics course in the HIV, and it has the link right there. So there was a company um, that came out. Uh, they call themselves CE Broker, like CE Broker. Um, when you go to get your license, you have to pass the exam. You have to have two years with a clinical um, supervisor, qualified supervisor. Um, like Rico said, you need to take um, an HIV class, um, which is online. Is that a two-hour thing, I think? Two yeah. hours for HIV I or one hour? I believe it's two hours. It's either two or one. So this is where is like yeah. eight or um, six. The or laws and rules is an eight-hour class online, um, so be prepared for that. 
It's like, and, and one of those things you just sit and go through, it's like a video thing, and there is t uh, test questions at the end. But be grateful, because that eight hours worth of information used to be on the exam, where you would have to know laws and rules. You don't have to know it anymore. You can sit through a thing. Thank you, DOH, if you're recording us. <laughs> okay. um, so you have to do um, HIV, eight hours, um, laws and rules, um, which she's referring to as ethics. It's laws, rules, and ethics. Um, and then one uh, domestic violence course. You need those three things. Um, when you go to the website CE Broker, um, they offer those. 10 bucks, 15 bucks, whatever you it's log in. I did like a, it was a bundle. Like a package. It had you know? all, like if you just search for LCSW, it'll have like a bundle with all three mm -hmm. of them. I think it was $94. And then it keeps track of, you know, what you've completed and all of that. And it goes to um, Department of Health automatically. You don't have to um, send anything in or anything like that. So, okay, good. I mean, double check that when it gets to your <laughs> time just to make sure. But, and, and you yeah. can do that within your two years. Uh, but you don't want to have, you don't want to have it so like you don't want to graduate take it and then it expire because you you know so just just be it's time sensitive but you can do it within your two years what else you got so uh two things i wanted to share with you guys when i um uh, two years ago i was in that seat um i graduated in 2016 and now he's here yes. and now i'm here <laughs> um i just completed my uh my hours of supervision i take the test for the second time on March 9th. Um, I missed it the first time by nine silly points. And, um, and when she talks about uh, the cost, you know, go ahead and get prepared because guess what? That 260 hits you again. Um, and you pay that each time you have to take it. Um, so this will be my second time and I have already claimed that I'm gonna pass it. Um, so, um, and yeah, it's just uh, a, a lot of preparation. So uh, will you share with them, did you pay for the $80 test um, with the ASWB the first go around? I did not. Dun, and I dun, really dun, wish dun. I had. <laughs> I really wish I had. Um, did you do it this time? I did this time. Okay. And um, so my preparation this time around is a lot different than uh, the first time around. I also purchased the program. It's uh, the Thera Therapist Development Center. You may or may not have uh, heard of it, but it's a great program. There is a cost, um, but the cool thing about it is they will allow you to use their program until you pass the test. So you pay one fee. Um, it has uh, some audio uh, lectures on it that when I'm on the road, I'm listening to those lectures. Um, and it's uh, a very valuable resource. They give you maybe about 10 to 12 different um, mock exams that you can take on all different types of uh, topics that you're going to be tested on. So it's a great resource. Yes. So what was the name of that resource again? Uh, the development, uh, the Therapist Development Center. That's the website. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, uh, the other thing is there are some, in, if you haven't, made yourself aware of this, get ready for it. There's knowledge, skills, and abilities that you're gonna to need to know for this test. K-S-A, knowledge, skills, and abilities that you're gonna to need to know for this test. And there's a boatload of them. <laughs> so they can ask you any questions regarding those knowledge, skills, and abilities in any variation of ways. So I also made you copies of those knowledge, skills, and abilities. It's a packet. Absolutely. I made 25, so share them with them. Um, share them with them. And them. all of this is online as well. Again, it is online. Um, yeah, yeah. This is from the ASWB. Um, and hey, does it say what the ASWB stands for? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, Association of Schools, Social Work, or Social Social Board. Board. I'm sorry. We're in a school right now. Um, <laughs> Social Work Board, it's ASWB. This is the um, National Testing Group. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's, this is exciting. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a test. It is a test. <laughs> Pay attention. It's a test. It's, it's not like a high score on an SAT. Um, it's a test. You need to be ready. Can you save me one copy of each of those? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Sure they yes. Get distributed there mm -hmm. right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. And, and like Denise said, it's not just a test, it's a standardized test. 
And there is a, you're not born knowing how to take a standardized test. There is a strategy to taking standardized tests. And if you haven't made plans to take Dr. D's, uh, Dr. Uh, Gigaleski's um, prep course, take it. Or, or the NASW. Yeah. Um, we like Dr. D because we all had her in some, like she was my professor. Um, but if not, the NASW also does a um, weekend prep course as well. And you want to schedule your exam as close as possible to when you take that prep course. But can you take your test within two years? No. Okay, and I just want to make sure we get it. Um, they're, they're within a window within their two years. If you submit and require or request the ASWB, they'll just um, decline your request for taking an exam. Because there's several people who just don't know this law just changed in November. And it might change back. Who knows? I don't know. Um, but, but we in, have to in Dr. Years. D's course, she spends it's two days, and the first almost full day is just talking about how to take a standardized test. Nothing to do with, you know, social work. Just how to take the, a standardized test. And so that book really you have is from her. Yeah, um, this is from thing. her. So you've got all the material to take home with you. Um, and then the next day is, you know, really focused on the social work content. So it is helpful. So some things to consider is you do want to take the ASWB $80 exam. Um, pay, it's $260 plus your $80, okay? Um, you have access to view those questions. Um, it, we had this whole conversation. Um, for, like 30 days. 30 days. You have a four-hour window. Um, again, you don't want to do 15 minutes, do laundry, 20 minutes, cook dinner, get the kids, do whatever. You want to sit in a quiet place just like you would be taking the exam. Because you want to see what your capability is once you're done. Like, if, if I did this for four hours and I, I really did not do well, I better go back to plan, do not take this test right now, um, and take another prep course or something, okay? Um, I do not do good on standardized tests. Uh, I had to take the ACT after I took the SAT. Um, and luckily, I probably shouldn't tell them this, but um, I'll tell you anyway. Um, I didn't need the GRE score to get into the master's program because I'm that old. I was here 20 years ago. I was doing the math as I was driving here. I couldn't believe we it. We don't require the GRE either. Oh, we don't require it now? Okay, I thought maybe you did. Um, so that's awesome to know. Um, so for me, I, I do not take standardized tests really well. So I, having that um, opportunity to take a, a, a smaller room um, so I could stand and walk and talk and engage the exams, um, you, will, you will come up against brain fatigue. Um, there were so many vignettes on this exam. I just, I was looking at the computer going, Sarah walks into your office, and I'm like, why is Sarah back again? <laughs> okay, wait, that's not important. Focus, Denise. Um, she walks into the office. Did she come through the front door or the back door? Does it matter? I don't even know. So you just get tired reading you know, questions. So you need to really prepare yourself um, in a variety of different ways. Okay? Yeah. Um, so is there um, anywhere that we can keep updates on if they change the requirements of a single test before? You can always look on the, um, the DOH website that I just um, pulled up for you guys is kind of very formal and like doctor-like clinical. The, the best way I'm keeping up to pace on that is through that forum on Facebook that um, Crystal has a hand in. Because all the LCS, it's all for the state of Florida. So everybody is kind of posting and, and some are more um, up to speed on legislation and, and laws and rules and all that jazz. So I just kind of follow what they put on there. Um, so no specific site per se, um, other than just kind of getting in the know. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, Dr. D, Dr. D is also on sabbatical right now, so not a lot of people know her. Okay, oh, okay, um, yeah. But like her website, she keeps her website updated. It's like SiriPro.net. Can you spell that for everybody? Yes, yeah, S I R I Pro dot net. Okay. S I R I Pro dot net. Uh huh. So I wanted to go back to the question about supervision. So suppose you had like a supervisor that was licensed in Florida, but she's not in the state. Can you still do supervision? Uh, I do not believe so. You have to because some of that has to be face to face. You cannot do it all remote. Yeah. And and for for
continuity of care, like you see, I, I like to touch, reach out and touch people and you know, be, you really want um, a supervisor that's grounded and knowledgeable. It becomes very fragmented. It's all these people, can you do a phone session? I'm like, no, not really. Cause then you're like, I can't hear you. We got to back it. It's just not good. Um, you really want to get a good qualified supervisor. And I have business cards for you um, at the end of today. Not that I need to supervise you all, um, but if you if you want a, uh, a qualified supervisor, we can talk. I like to interview because if we're not a good fit, then because I do sometimes get a little energetic and, and rub off on people when they don't follow those instructions. And I will say, um, I can't. What will you say? I can't stress the importance <laughs> of finding a solid uh, supervisor. Uh, because when I met Ms. Myers, I knew right away she spoke for like 30 seconds and she was full of energy. I'm like, I spoke I'm gonna. For just 30 seconds? No, that's you spoke for like two hours. That's okay, yeah. That's more 30 like seconds <laughs> equation. But I knew I was gonna sucker fish her. I was gonna attach, and I've been for like three years. So it's real important. I mean, she's always on. She is on, too and much she's on. present, and she's knowledgeable, as you guys can see. She knows her stuff. Uh, not only the DOH stuff, but uh, clinician stuff, and, um, and she's on point. Am I for this? No, <laughs> no. I'm gonna take you out to dinner later. I'm appreciative. Wait, of that's a good boundaries and ethics. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your own, kid. Yes. Yeah. Um, what are some like things that we should look for, like an advice that you can give us, like when we look for a supervisor? Like, what's something we should look for, like red flags? Um, your supervisor should have a contract. If it's willy-nilly and they say, sure, I'll supervise you, you're like, oh, okay, do you have a contract? If they're like, why do we need that? Then you might want to say, maybe you should have a contract. How many supervisors do you, or uh, interns do you have? How long have you been doing this? Um, I, I personally work for Orange County Public Schools during the day, that's my day gig. Um, I've been with OCPS for 20 years. Um, I have a private practice also. Um, that's where my passion is. That's what I'm designed to do. Like this is why I was put on the planet to do private practice. I do not do private practice full time um, because it is exhausting. Um, it, it's in isolation. If you see client after client after client, you start to lose the vortex of reality. Um, not that, not, you know, working for OCPS is, is fun. I work with kids, I work with families. It can be equally exhausting, but I work with a team. I get to move around. Um, as, a, as a clinician, I have to really make, I do uh, fun events like this, so I get to be out in the community and engage. Um, so you wanna look for a supervisor that's well-rounded. Um, that is pretty flexible. I do um, supervision on weekends um, because I did have a, um, and in turn say weekends, that's like the work week day. And I was like, oh, you're out. Um, because you, you have to commit to this process. This is a two year long haul. Um, you will come in green, I promise you, you will go out gold. Um, green being I don't know a whole lot, you're gonna go out gold knowing everything I know and then some. My job is to, to, to miracle grow you so we can get on with it. Um, I don't talk a lot in supervision specifically about the test, but I do permit them to have time at certain times to, because Rico's getting his test on the uh, March 9th, it's breathing down his back. So they've been doing some questioning and, th and then we go through the questions as a group um, during supervision. If this is your client, why would you have answered A over B? What is the, the rhythm? What is the, uh, the thought process behind the question? Um, a lot of uh, the prep courses for NASW, as well as Dr. D's class, um, or other ones that you find, you will see, and quote me if I'm incorrect, because you've done it, you will see repeat test questions um, on the test, verbatim, almost. Um, there, there are people, and it is not, um, not illegal to do, where people will take the test and have this like photographic memory of sorts, um, and then people, uh, will create a bank of test questions. They'll pay you like five bucks. What was the test question? And you try and remember it as best you can. Um, and it will show up again closely. I remember when I took my test years ago um, in my study material, I'm like, I at least know one because that was in my test booklet. Yeah. Um, I remember. So it's really helpful if you take um, a prep class because you will expose yourself to the questions. 
um, all the things that they had suggested that they utilize. Um, you mentioned, Jessica, the pop, uh, Pocket Prep thing. Pocket what prep? is that? Yes, it's just an app um, called Pocket Prep. And um, it gives a bunch of um, questions that will be, uh, not will be on the exam, but um, that may look like questions that are on the exam. They're and formatted it was, the same way. Yes, it was interesting because Rico showed up a couple weeks ago with a, um, what did you have, a, a book a that study he had guide. bought. Yeah, yeah, a study guide. And actually on the pocket prep, um, it cites that book. So, I mean, it, you know, gets the questions from legitimate um, places. But I think it's for $20. There's a free version that gives you a limited number of questions, but then you can pay $20 um, to get, I think, up to like a thousand questions. Right. And it'll give you the answer and explain why um, that's the correct answer and these aren't the correct answers. So that's really helpful. Um, one thing I was going to say too, just because you were talking about commitment, if, if you're married or have kids or anything, it really does become like a family commitment too. So, you know, it would be, you know, wise just to talk to the people in your household. My husband wants me to have my license, I think, more than I do. He'll be like, Jim's your region, why are you going? Yes, you are, you're going. You know, just, you know, because it does take a lot of time. It takes a lot of, um, you know, financial commitment there at the beginning. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. um, while we're on commitment, I was just going to ask, is it feasible to have a job and be an intern, like to have a full-time or part-time job? We yes. all work. We all have yeah. full-time mm -hmm. jobs. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yeah. I think we're, yeah. We're almost out of time. Yeah, time. Could we go over the five-year rule about becoming a registered intern and then the new state law that says mm -hmm. one has five years? They won't take five years to get um, licensed. <laughs> I'm sure of it. <laughs> right? Um, it used to be back in the day um, you could graduate and take forever um, and I do mean forever there are some um, registered clinical social work interns out there floating that have been interns for 10 years um, and I'm gonna be the first to guess that they're probably not doing supervision um, as they should be according to chapter 491 consistently with a supervisor for 10 years um, which means there's a gap in break in service. So if the DOH ever comes to you and says, you're a registered intern for 10 years, tell me who your supervisor's been all this time, and you can't produce one, that's going to red flag you. Um, I don't know what the DOH does with that, but it's just not good. Um, so now they've come out and said, soon as you do this process, soon as you click apply, they give you a registered intern number, the clock starts ticking. You have five years to complete this exam. If you miss the window and do not get it done in five years, we're done. Like you do not have another opportunity or window of time to come back and, and get that um, license. Now, if there's like extenuating circumstances, I don't know what the DOH does with that. I have my license, so I'm not in that predicament. Um, but everybody, uh, we, we just know it's now a five year window like a five-year window from the start. Uh, I don't, like you can't, for example, if I go on sabbatical and I'm not practicing and using my license, I can contact the DOH. You saw how it said clear and active. I can go inactive, okay? So my license is still good, everything's good. I just pay the DOH some money, of course, um, to <laughs> inactivate my license. You do not have that opportunity to say, oh, I'm gonna take a year off hey, what's this gap year thing? I hear this all the time, right? You graduate and you're like, I'm gonna do a gap year. I'm like, what is that? Um, I, I didn't, like, you know. <laughs> There's no gap year with the DOH. When you start the clock, it's on. You got five years to complete and take your, and pass your license exam, okay? So I've had students say to me, but I'm not, I'm gonna travel or go work overseas for two years. How am I gonna, then they panic about the five year rule this happens once you become a registered intern. Right. So you can wait a year or two to become a registered intern. More or less. Um, but, but to then, <laughs> no, I do not recommend that whatsoever. No, please don't do it. But. I waited 13 years. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. So, so the clock starts ticking from the time you become a registered intern. I think it's important to point out. We've got to go. Yes. Yes. Thank you to our guests. Thank you.